Ask the Podcast Coach for March 23rd, 2024. Let's get ready to podcast. There, there it is. It's that music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It means it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting.com, and joining me right over there is, uh, hold on, we're going to fix that. It's the one and only, keep keep waving, Jim. There we go. The one and only <laughs> Jim Cullison from TheAverageGuy.tv. And if you're new to the show, what you do here is we're live, so you can go to AskThePodcastCoach.com slash live, but you can also go, according to this thing right there, AskThePodcastCoach.com slash question, and you can uh, jump into the video and... But it is Saturday morning, which means, you know, sometimes we're, we're dragging it a little bit. And the best way to uh, get a pickup, and Jim's got it handled there, is, that's right, a little coffee. And that coffee pour is brought to you by our good friend Mark over at podcastbranding.co. And if you're watching the video, you can see he's done the Ask the Podcast Coach logo. He's done the School of Podcasting. He's done the podcast rodeo show. He's currently working on your podcast website's logo. So I, when I talk about how great he is, I'm doing that from firsthand experience. He's made, he just, everything looks really pretty and just professional. And I had somebody yesterday that it, it really looked like they did their artwork in crayon. And I'm like, that's just not a good first impression. And one of the things you got to think about, especially if you're trying to be a guest on other shows, they're going to come over and look at your website. And, you know, if the first thing they see is a logo that's like, Eek. yeah, that's not good. And speaking of websites, if you need a website, you can have Mark do your whole website. Anything that you want to look good, go contact Mark over at podcastbranding.co. The beautiful thing about it is he is a podcaster and an award-winning graphic. Oh, I've already cut myself off. I'm not done. No, sorry. No take me home. No cappuccino. I'm not done talking about Mark. Uh, you know, he's he's going to do that extra time with you. He did with me, and uh, we're now working on uh, version two of the Your Podcast website logo. So if you need somebody, then go over and talk to Mark at podcastbranding.co, which then leads us to cappuccino on the phone, take me home, okay. <laughs> and then that leads to Jim talking about our good friend Dan. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big thanks. I'm not sure what I'm I'm doing here. It's all you got it all discombobulated this morning. Big I thanks to our good friend Dan over there. You're all, all all wound up over there at based on a true story at based on a true story podcast.com. This week, Waterloo, The Blue Max, and Hitler, The Rise of Evil are the movies that he is covering. If you're interested, need need something else to listen to, we got a long Easter weekend coming up here next week. Maybe you're on the road traveling. Good time to download a new podcast and have a listen. Check it out today based on a true story podcast.com. Beautiful. And I have to run over because I've had, I went over to, you know, the typical Reddit stuff. And I thought this was a good question to, uh, to start off because some people are, are in this boat. And that is, well, Jim, you, like you kind of have co-hosts. But when it comes up to ideas and stuff, somebody said, who do you brainstorm with if you don't have a co-host or a team? And they say, if you're making a podcast now and don't have a team or a co-host or a partner, a partner of some sort, who do you brainstorm with when you have a format or creative question? And I was like, hmm, that's an interesting question. And also, for me, it's ugly right now. But if you go to yourpodcastwebsite.com, you will see where one of the biggest things over there is sign up for the email list. And that's why. That's, that's the group that is going to basically help me shape the show. And I've told them, it's like, you are my focus group. And, you know, this is, so start an email list, start a Facebook group. I don't know. Any other ideas, Jim? Well, chat GPT will actually help you do that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good at that. It, you know, once you've gotten a couple ideas from it, they're going to start sound pretty, pretty repetitive, but yeah, you know, Dave, I wanted to ask you a question back on that. You've got, say, you know, you call them, say you call them a board of directors or you call them whatever, this group that you've gathered to help you with ideas. Sometimes you don't want to listen to their ideas. <laughs> you know, like 
not every idea is a good idea. And I know everybody thinks their ideas are the best ideas, but sometimes you don't want to do it. How do you, how do you handle that when you get that idea from somebody or like you should, what you should really do is just and leave that little mustache in between, you know, and you're like, right. eh, we're not going to do that kind of thing. I know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. A lot of people are saying this brainstorm with bots. Yeah. Th that is the fun part. What happens when you get feedback that steers your show in the wrong direction? That or would be perceived a, the wrong direction. Yeah, it perceived. may not be, you don't know yet. You know, you're kind of like, well, that's, that's the tricky part. Like for the record, like last week we were talking about the different artwork options. We had op option one that had this cool microphone, but instead of the microphone, it was a mouse because it's your podcast website. And then there was this other one with the hand clicking on stuff. I like the mic. I like the mic one. That was the one that jumped out at me. Yeah. And everybody else was like, oh, dude, option number two. I get in. I was like, is this group speak? And then I looked at my, I had a Google form and the Google form was like number two. And I'm like, all right, well, the audience has spoken. And I could have said, well, I'm using number one because I think the mouse is cool. But I was like, no, if everybody else is saying two, even without group think, then, you know, let's uh, let's go that route. And so sometimes you, you know, it, it, like I could have gone my way and made it all about me. But if you have a bunch of people, uh, here's a great example. Have you ever heard of this thing called YouTube? It's a, it's a website, I guess. Yeah. YouTube, a small little website. Yeah. YouTube, they're, just tr they're trying some things out. Yeah. YouTube started as a dating site. And it was a place where you could upload videos to kind of say, hi, I'm Dave. I'm you know, 40 pounds overweight. I like to podcast, you know, and, you know, I like hard rock, whatever. And then people started putting up videos that weren't about dating and then more videos, not about dating. And they went, huh, we put this out to do this. Like, do we just put in some controls to make sure it's about dating or should we just let people upload videos about anything? This seems to be what the audience wants. And they went with option number two, let's make it a video hosting thing. So there does come a time if you're getting a bunch of feedback that says we want to go this way and you wanted to go that way, well, you can either go, you know, you say, nope, <clears throat> sorry, I'm attracting the wrong audience. I just need to tweak this or B, yeah. go to where the audience want to go. So that's. Uh, well, I, uh, speaking of feedback, uh, we're getting some that I'm a little louder than you. Yeah, I, I am adjusting there. as we speak, and I see and where I, you... I turned down a little bit too. And we yeah. have a super chat out there as well. We got a super chat. We do from, have a super uh, chat. ATHF, all the no after dancing the is forbidden. dancing is forbidden. What does ATHF mean? But the, thank you very much for the super chat. ATHF. I understand dancing is forbidden. That's a dirty dancing thing. Oh, I'm not sure. AT, all the hot. Mm, yeah. So. Should we have the guest room, the, the uh, chat room guess? What let's that, all guess uh, what ATHF means. Because <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think with dirty dancing, like what was the name? I'm sure ATHF will, will put it in that. Steve yeah, Stewart is in the chat room. Holy yeah. cow. The you king of it? audio editors. Beautiful. Dancing. Is, yeah. But thank you for the super um, chat. Dan says, Dan LeFebvre says, it, it, I like to use terms that make it obvious they're not making the final decisions. You know, thanks for mm. the input or uh, recommendation or suggestions. And I, and I get that. It's just, even if you, I think even if you're clear about that, when people give you feedback, they really think it's right. And sometimes it is. Yeah. And they really think you're going to act on it tomorrow. And yeah, you're not. That's the other thing. <laughs> right? What do you mean? Like, I oh, sent this in on Friday. No. It's Monday. What's going on? I got some feedback this week on the Gallup side of things from a, a friend in Europe. And uh, he was like, you know, if you would do your live shows in a more European friendly time zone, you'd get more from Europe. Mm. And I'm like, yes, that's true. But the overall gains I would get from Europe would not be anywhere close to the numbers that I get from the United States. So if I did it at 5 a.m., so to speak, here U.S. time, I get nobody from the U.S. and I get, I'm going to get a handful from Europe. If I do it at 9 a.m., nah, that's probably not a good example. If I do it like 3 p.m. here in the United States, Europe's offline at that point. They're not, they're not going to tune in. 
but I'm going to get 35 as opposed to five. Now, listen, the podcasts do way more numbers than the live stuff that I do anyway. So I don't worry about that too much from a timing perspective, but that it was tough. He was, it, it was a listener who wanted to listen to it live. Happened to live in a time zone that makes it difficult to do that. Also, there was some expectation of like, well, why can't you just do it at 11 o'clock my time for me? Right. <laughs> and you're like, well, it, 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 there's other factors that go into this, right? So, you know, I had to kind of gently say, well, I take multiple factors into account, including the guest and the time zone availability, some of those kinds of things. And again, the live audience, we only get 2% of our listens from live. <laughs> so I'm not yeah. prioritizing it v that, that much. That didn't go over well. Like he was not, that was not a, oh, thanks, Jim. I appreciate, you know, the transparency and being honest with me. It was like, well, I don't care. I want right. it in my time, you know? So that's the hard part of feedback. I think it's sometimes, or gathering a, a group of people around you and asking that question. They really do think like, well, I said it. Why haven't you done it? Mm. Like, eh, eh, you know, it's, that's not what I'm looking for here. I'm just. And, you know, Dan, in the same, yeah, you know, go ahead. Dan hit the nail on the head. Sometimes you can't help that some people think the world revolves around them. I mean, how many times, I don't want to get into this discussion, but I mean, there are times when it's like, I feel this, that means you must change. Then mm -hmm. it's like, well, no, not really. I mean, I'm sorry if I made you feel bad, but uh, no, you know. And uh, the, I'm not, listen, I'm not sure that's a current thing. I, I think that's been going on for a long time. Well, that's it's true. Just, I think human nature you know it's human listen we you and i both did work before the internet and listen i did a lot of you know i would do a lot of church stuff music church mm -hmm. music stuff when i was younger and the audience this was all before the internet the audience had no problem telling me what they liked and what they didn't like so i don't i don't know if it's an internet or it's a current thing i think it's just a human thing it's the i think it's a hard part of leadership by the way is oh. is it's being able to take, and sometimes the suggestions they make, you need to follow them. You need to go, you know what? I do need to fix this. And sometimes you need to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. The, the hard part of the genius of leadership is knowing which is which and when to do it. And it's, sometimes it's not always clear. And so you just have to make a decision. And that's part of being an adult, I think, is making that decision, living with the consequences. And part of that is, yeah, good leaders make decisions instead of like, well, we need we need more information, you know. Well, sometimes they make bad ones, too. I mean, that's the thing. And sometimes you make bad decisions and yeah. you've got to own up to it and kind of go, yeah, I'm, I pivoted and I thought this was going to be great. I Listen, I added a show segment at one point forget which show it was, but I added the show segment and it was terrible. It was just, and I thought it was going to be the cat's meow. You know, I was like, oh, oh this thing is good. This is going to revolutionize podcasting. You know, I, I thought I was the next Joe Rogan. And then it just fell flat. And a few people were like, you know, that's not the, that's not the smartest thing you've ever done. And you, you go, eh, yeah, you're right. So sometimes we make, you got, you got to know too, when, like when you've made a bad decision and you're like, yeah, I, I shouldn't deflect this anymore. I shouldn't defend myself anymore. Just say it was a bad decision to move on. You know? Yeah. The chat room saying there are quite a few people who make suggestions that don't understand the logistics behind it. I do this all the time at Lips and I'm like, can't we just make the system do such and such? And then I'll go, says the guy that's never done programming. I'm like, I understand you're probably going Oh, that guy's such an idiot. I'm like, but I'm just saying, this is what people want. Can't, and then again, like, why can't we have this by like next Wednesday? Like, what's the deal? Creating great grooming dogs. Uh, you'll find that you have a strong opinion once you ask others. Yeah, that's how you'll find out. It's a great point. And then Chris from castahead.net, there's human nature and then there's bad human nature. And that is true. And then also the mystery has been solved. And as soon as somebody said this, I'm like, of course it is. It's the cartoon. It's the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, yeah. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. It's like, we all know that. I think we know that. We've even said that before. Yeah, I know. As soon as he said, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, how did I not know that? Uh, yeah. So, And then Gary Stockton, who I now hear in a British accent when I read these, now that I know these, you know, James Bond, keep an open mind and being open to other perspectives is a, it is a soft skill. And not that, not something that everybody has unfortunately so it is what it is but uh 
I'm with you though. I, I brainstorm because a lot of times it's just me is chat GPT where I'll be yeah. like, I think I'm doing a show on this and I've got my, my list of six things that my brain has put out and I'll be like, what are the steps to doing whatever the heck I'm going to talk about? And it'll give me quite a few. I did a uh, thing where, hold on, we'll share my website here <laughs> because I had ideas for the new show. Like, Hey, here's, here's some things I'm going to talk about in the, your podcast website. And if we go to this, so here you can see mine are at the top. And then I said, Hey, you know, Mr. GPT. And then I said, Hey, and it gave me 20. Now, not all these are great, but it was 20. And I was like, okay, give me another 20. And it did. So out of these, there's some ideas that I was like, Oh, you know what? That's not a bad idea because I forgot about, you know, you have to, again, figure out who is my audience and is this seasoned, you know, podcast people or website people, or are we going to talk about what's the difference between a WordPress page and a WordPress post? And in, I'm basing this on a webinar I went to, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to start it down there. This is not for the seasoned Cause if you're, if you're Mark from podcast branding, you don't need this show because you've been doing this forever and you know what a website it's for the person that is trying to do their own website and they're not a web guy and they don't have the budget to be, to have a web guy and that whole nine yards. And I'm like, okay, let's, you know, like I, I know somewhere in the first five shows is going to be, cause I see this all the time. They might, I'll ask somebody, you know, they've been podcasting, they've got, you know, 12 episodes out and like, what's the goal of the podcast? Why are you doing it? Well, I want to be seen as an expert, I want to drive traffic to my website. I want people to hire me. I'm like, great. And then I go in and in their feed, they're pointing at their Libsyn site or their Captivate site or whoever. And then every episode is pointing to their media host. And I'm like, yeah, you should be putting, just treat every episode like a blog post and then throw a player in there and voila. And then Google finds the description from your episode when you get found in Google and people go to your website, they're going to click play and then they're going to sit on your site for a while, which is going to make your site on your time on site go up that boosts your SEO. It's super simple, but I just see that's like, the, that's almost the situation that I was like, I have to do a podcast. If nothing else, just to do that one episode, that's the one I'm going to do. Cause I just see people do that all the time. So that's, uh, but I'm having fun with this quick uh, intro for the show. And what was interesting is I went to 11 labs and typed, well, first I went to chat GPT and I said, give me a 60 second script for a show. And then I said, it's for podcasters who don't have any website experience, blah, blah, blah. And it spit out that. And I went to 11 labs and have found a, a woman. It's weird. This whole show, I don't know why, but I'm like, I want to make this not sound like every other Dave Jackson show. So there's no funky rock music. It's like kind of jazz piano. And then instead of having, you know, Wayne Henderson, the deep voice guy go, it's the your podcast website. Now I found a woman that's not a woman. It's a chat thing. And what's so interesting about it is I never expected this is that uh, she needs a DSer. Like you would think the robot voice would be pristine audio and her S's were a little, says was like, e. A little hot, huh? So I, I had to huh. kind of DS her. But what was interesting is I had her read it four times because she kept saying, learn things like CO. And I'm like, yeah, that's SEO. <laughs> so I had to type E-S-E-E-O-H, you know, so she would say really? SEO. Yeah. Now, one time, could, what was if weird. You put spaces? Yeah. If you put spaces between it, it would still say CO? Uh, no, because I just, the first time I just put SEO oh, and she right, was like, CEO. Right, but, if, but when I finally spelled it out, she did it. But the one time what was weird is I, I didn't even notice it when I was kind of doing it. And then one time she actually said SEO before I spelled it out. And I'm like, well, why would it do and like, okay, stupid robot, you're fired. But what I did was I took different chunks. Like sometimes she'd have just the right voice inflection. I'm like, okay, that's a good one for the beginning. And then the middle one, she kind of, you know, and then I'm adding spaces, you know, but I was surprised that if you take a voice and then put music under it, 
add a little spacing. I was kind of cool that at times she, you could actually hear her breathe, which was kind of nice. I was like, that's, that's not bad. I'm like, that's passable. Cause I've, I've heard other voices and, and I think the key to this is putting music under it because you will hear where it's kind of a, a voice, but not really. And it's usually in the timing where they keep just talking and they pause in the middle for no apparent reason. You're like, it's, but this, I had total control, but it took me like four tries. And especially with the, I wanted her to go, here's Dave Jackson. And she just kept going, here's Dave Jackson. Here's Dave Jackson. I'm like, no, like, and I'm like, boost the, boost the, you know, make her yeah. flamboyant or whatever. And it, make it sound like uh, Ed McMahon. He is <laughs> Dave. Well, here's the cool thing. In 11 Labs, if you wanted to, I could have done, you know, I might have to play with that now. But I could go, and here's Dave Jackson. And then upload that and say, use the robot voice and use that inflection. That's a new uh, thing. And I was like, yeah. so I could do the, you know, Ed McMahon. Good old, is he dead? He's still dead, right? I think he's dead. He's <laughs> still dead? I do think they he... come back these days? <laughs> 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 but good old, uh, yeah. Um, oh. We have a question. Rich Graham is saying, hey, Rich Graham, winner of the 30-minute consulting. We had a great time together. We do. If you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash giveaway, I am giving away 30 minutes of consulting. And he goes, note, Joy, is that a new thing? Yes, that is my new Evernote. Evernote said, hey, Dave, we're so happy to have you as a customer that we're going to double your price. And I'm like, that's funny. And well, you know what? That's a great segue to kind of what we're talking about. If you think about it, I don't know who it is, but I am not Evernote's target person anymore. I'm a guy that just wanted notes. That was it. And I want them, and this is kind of weird, I want them to be somewhat pretty. Like Notion, I understand, will, you know, make my bed and do the laundry and cook breakfast. It's just boring to look at. It is gray and gray. And I understand somebody said, well, you could have color-coded your notes. I'm like, okay. But I found Evernote. The other thing was, or I found uh, NoteJoy. Supportthisshow.com slash NoteJoy to use my affiliate link. Link's in the show notes. And the other thing was Evernote was kind of being like the jilted lover. Like, fine, if you want to leave, you can only take 10 notes at a time, and I want my black T-shirt back, right? They were just being really crappy about it. And I started, there was a couple open source things I was doing, and then I found NoteJoy, and they're like, oh, we." and the other thing I wanted was the ability to email NoteJoy and have them put that email as a note in that. That was another cool thing of Evernote. And they had a web clipper, which is cool. So, and it was like, you know, it was more than what Evernote was cho charging me, but less than what Evernote was going to charge me. So it's kind of in the middle. And the thing I loved about it, I log into NoteJoy. I go, here's my Evernote login name and password. And they just went and brought everything over. And I'm like, now, now we're talking. So the only thing I found that I was like, hmm, and I made a video and sent it to them. They do, when you do a web clip, it tries to kind of reformat it and make it, I forget what the official title is. Let me see if I bring this up. It says it is a simplified article. And I just said, hey, I appreciate the simplified article, but I, I made this clipping of this one page and you kind of simplified some stuff right out of it. And I'm like, that's not cool if I have to go back and check every note I clip to make sure you got it all. And I'm like, I had to go back, do a, select all copy and paste. And that worked. I'm like, but I'm under uh, the assumption that if I clip a website, I'm getting it all. And I've not heard back from them. That was the only thing I've heard seen so far, but cause I'm just a guy, I could have used Apple notes. Apple notes is fun, but uh, you know, I was like, uh, you know, 50 bucks a year, but are you paying any on that uh, something like that? Yeah. So, and the other thing was, I think might, might be a little more cause I had something like 14,000 notes which is why when they said you have to do it 10 at a time, I'm like, no, we're not doing that. Sorry. Uh, but uh, still more like a hundred bucks a year or a little less. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think yeah. it was 90. Their something. plus plan maybe. Yeah. Their plus they're plan. No joy. Yeah. yeah. And so okay. I just use it all the time, especially when I'm uh, like, I'm going to uh, LA next week. That is next week, by the way, there is no show next week. I thought it was this week. It's next week, but I will be taking pictures of all my receipts, which makes it really easy. And then, because it's on my computer, it's on my phone, it's on my tablet, it's everywhere. It's like Santa Claus. And you uh, basically, when I get home then, I just right-click on the picture, save it into my expenses folder, and 
you know, do the whole expense sheet, which is always so much fun. It's one of those things that's not hard. You just, everybody's like, ah, okay, here's what I had for breakfast. You know, that whole nine yards. So if you're in uh, LA by any chance next week at uh, Podcast Movement Evolutions, I'll be at the Libsyn booth and I'm speaking on Thursday on how to hook your audience, which is really, it's kind of weird because, boy, this sounds like a weird humble brag, but when you, when you end up talking a lot, it's hard to come up with a presentation where you're not just repeating everything you've already said. Plus, if you're like me and podcasting is a sickness where you're always doing a podcast, like you've said something at least once before. So it's hard to make something that's not a complete rerun of here's everything. Oh, it's Dave doing Dave's greatest hits again. But I found a couple of things that I haven't talked about before. So that'll be fun. What, uh, what hooks you, Jim? Like, is there anything that you can think of that you're like, Ooh, that got me. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, authentic humor. Like mm. just, there's a couple podcasts that I listen to that are just, they don't try to be funny. They're just funny. You know, they're, they're in the midst of doing their podcast. They've got a great relationship with each other. They know what, they know how to get each other. You know, they, they're just funny. I, I found myself, I was driving in, it was either Thursday or Friday and there was a funny moment going on and I'm laughing out loud in the car and I'm realizing the person next to me is staring at me <laughs> laughing by myself in the car. Right. For me, I like that kind of authentic and maybe even some self-deprecating. That's that's my favorite kind of humor when it's <clears throat> sorry, self-deprecating humor. So it's just a good, that's those, those are the kind of things that hook me. By the way, my, my viewing habits on YouTube are very different. So I'm more of a, on YouTube, I'm more of a DIY guy. I like to see people do things. I like to see them clean up stuff or I like to see them make stuff or tear stuff down or you visual, know, uh, visual. Yeah. Visual yeah. things. And I'm not necessarily looking. In fact, there's one DIYer that lately made a little bit of a format change and they're mm. doing these things, but in between they're doing these kind of silly, they're not very funny. They think mm -hmm. they're funny. Duh. They're actually not very funny. All my and, friends say I'm funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's the little things that the, you know, the kids do with each other to, you know, to, and it's, it's, it's supposed to be sarcastic or it's supposed to be, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's not funny to me. And I'm like, guys, I, I'm watching you to tear stuff up and put it back together, not rib each other about how dull your tools are or, how cheap you are in the, in, in the kind of things that you buy. And so it, yeah, I've noticed my, my YouTube habit is different than my podcast uh, habit mm -hmm. as far as what I'm looking for. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, oh. I am watching more and more YouTube on my TV in my living room. That's like my lunch yeah. thing. I go to lunch. I ask my Google thing, not the woman in the tube to open YouTube and she opens it on my TV, which I still feel like it's magic that, you know, and so that, and plus Meet the Jetsons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there you go. Look at this. Who's it? We got Steve Stewart and we have Mr. Bitcoin boomer himself, Gary Leland. Nice. Hey Gary. Or if you're, if you're an old timer like me, Mr. Podcast pickle, it's been a while. Since uh, is it should we cancel our show more often and then come back? <laughs> should we stay every week? Yeah, we're not going to be here next week, and then it, it last minute show up and uh, and or maybe it's just the week before Podfest. Is it no podcast movement? Sorry, the week before podcast movement, everybody's just getting geared up, ready to go. That's it. Out. Gary, are you going to be Steve? Are you guys going to be at uh, podcast movement? Am, am I saying the right thing? Podcast, podcast movement, movement. Okay. evolutions. You have to throw in the evolution. Evol evolution. And what's the difference again between movement and movement evolutions? More old guys in suits at evolutions. Lot. They, it's they, LA, right? LA. Well, they should do. They should just come out and say what it is. Podcast movement evolutions is more business to business because it's more business to business. There's a lot of wondery. Like we're sending like twenty three people from Lipson. And four of them from Libsyn and the rest are from Advertise Cast because those guys are going to be working it with all the big networks and all that other stuff. So that's going to be fun. Gordon, I would think Gordon's going to be at maybe Podcast Movement Evolutions. I don't know. He might. He's an entertainment lawyer. 
And he also, I think, lives in L.A., if I remember right. I know he's somewhere out there. And uh, Steve Stewart says he's not going, so. Oh, no, I'm Steve Stewart. Um, that's Steve, it. Steve, if you're not Forget going, it. I'm not going. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's very, it's, I don't think it's for the, ah, see, I get in trouble if I say this. It doesn't appear to be that the indie podcaster is as interested in evolutions as they are in podcast movement, which will be happening later this year in D.C. So I just know last year, because it's supposed to be, evolution. So let's talk about what's happening, the new technology and all that stuff. Mm. So I did an episode, I did a presentation on podcasting 2.0. And if I remember right, I had nine people and I was like, well, it's not the quality. It's not the quantity. It's the quality of people. And we had lots of time for Q and a, which was great, but I, it's, I, it's, it seems very business to business. A lot of networks there and Lot, that's where you run into people like, so tell me about your show. Oh, I'm, I'm just the storyboard guy for Pineapple Express, you know, blah, 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 some sort of big network, something, something, something. So, yeah, Tim says, uh, I'll be at PodFest Movement in D.C. That makes sense because Tim lives in D.C., if I remember right. He was always involved with uh, D.C. PodFest. Yes. Steve says, one less old guy in a suit. So, Yeah. People still wearing suits, really? If you really? go to if you go to NAB, especially there are l- like really old guys in suits because they're from radio. Yeah, Back in the right, day, right. yeah, I'm the manager of Wixie 960 AM. You know, like really seriously, like. <laughs> but I haven't been to NAB in a long time either, so that's uh, that's always a fun I, one. I threw away all my dress up clothes. To, well, I fatted out of them uh, to begin with. That's it. That's me. Point. None of mine fit. I, <laughs> I gotta buy a new shirt. I gotta. I'm singing in the choir on Easter and apparently my neck is not 17 anymore. And it's either a leave the button out and have the tie kind of cover the fact that you're not buttoning that. Yeah, but right. I was like, just get a Just get a new shirt. You probably need one anyways. Yeah. yeah. Well that, the problem is I'm part orangutan. So I need like 36 arm 18 neck now, but uh, they pronounce that orangutan. That's orangutan. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. Gordon is speaking. At Evolutions on Wednesday, network and acquisition deals, mock negotiation. There you go. Well, speaking of uh, legal stuff, let's let's do this one. Do I have the questions? Well, yeah. So this was. I'll put this link in the the thing about Bob in just a second. Hey, I, I'm thinking of using a name. It says I I have so many good names and ideas. I find that many of them were used by short running smaller pods. Here we go. I can't do a oh, no, no pod. pods. It's a show that I've since seemed fizzle out. It feels counterintuitive to me, but to y'all, how does it feel morally speaking to title the same name as another show that hasn't published an episode in one plus years, especially if the name is more relevant to my show than the older one. Alternately, how do you niche your names with keeping them eye catching and relevant? Those are called taglines, boys and girls. My newer show is very casual, but themes to an industry. So play on words is preferred over just the, the blank podcast with blank. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the blank podcast because that's what uh, peeps are using. But there is an article that I will put in the chat room. Yes, I will put in the chat room that's on Pod News where you, there is a trademark. Now, here, here's the one that you go, really? Really? It was something about money. I forget the name of the show. But let's say I did a show and I called it Home Gadget Geeks with Jim Cullison. And that was the name of my show. It was literally that blatant. And it was like the money pot, money something with Laura Smith or something. And this person did a show with that exact name. And I was like, yeah, I don't think that's really, I don't think a judge is going to have a hard time going. Let's see, does this trademark confuse? Do people get this confused with the other one? I'm like, yes, yes, they do. And so it's trick. It's one of those things where it's like, you're kind of on thin you know, thin ice there because the person could say I used it first, but they did quit. Eh, So I'm usually like, let's go back to the drawing board and see if you can come up. Like I spent two days looking at your podcast website and I did not find, I found lots of things about websites and I found a lot of things about podcast websites, but nobody, at least according to uncle Google through many different searches with quotation marks and not quotation marks and things like that. Nobody's doing a show called your podcast website. So I think I'm okay on that. And if they came to me and said, I've been doing this since, you know, 2019, I would just go, okay, well, we're going to do a rebrand and 
mm-hmm. go to town. But mm-hmm. what what do you mm-hmm. think, Jim? If it's been over, you know, a year, they only did four episodes. What I would do, I would here's where the you know hire a nerd, get their old RSS feed, and in theory, unless they use Buzzsprout or Captivate, you should be able to pull their email out of their RSS feed and email them and say, hey, I'm thinking of doing a show that has the same name as your show. Do you know, are you completely done with this podcast? I would like to offer you $50 for your name and your RSS feed, and I'm going to pick the show up. In fact, if you want, we could actually do an episode where you come on and explain how you're handing the show off to me. I would try that just to see, you know, now chances are, you're going to send that to an email that they never check anymore because it was the email they used with that podcast that they haven't done in forever ago. So that might be something I would try because a, then you're not starting with zero audience, you know, in theory now, probably not a big audience because if it was a big audience, they probably wouldn't have quit, but that would be uh, something you might want to try. Two, two different things happening here. One is, Somebody is trying to ride on your trade trademark. Let's just say, I listen, I don't have Home Gadget Geeks trademarked. So we'll use that as an example. So I think, you know, I've been doing Home Gadget Geeks. Well, it's been Home Gadget Geeks for maybe eight years now. It was yeah. Home Tech before. And now there's actually a Home Tech podcast. And I have the guests from home or the hosts from Home Tech on my show from time to time. And we talk about how, you know, I've, I've talked about that was my original name. And I dropped it and they took it. But let's just say somebody else came along and and uh, took all of a sudden a home gadget geek sh- showed up. I think I may try to figure out some ways to take advantage of that. Like there's some momentum there, and yeah, there's causes some confusion. Now I don't do home gadget geeks. It's not my job. I don't do it as it's not. I'm not making money off of it for I do a little bit. But so the caveat that caveat uh, it's not my livelihood. But I might try to figure out some ways to let them do some work for me. And see if I can get them to drive traffic back to me. In other words, we always think they're taking our traffic. And I kind of wonder, is it, would there be some ways to, to reverse that, right? To make it that way. So that's, that's item number one. That somebody steps on you. You stepping on somebody else. Dave, I like your idea of, you know, so say you find it, it hasn't been done for a while. I like the idea of contacting them. Chances are that you'll probably, you'll, you'll probably hear crickets. You can take the risk and try it. If it's a small, you know, Gordon had said in chat, if it's one year, mm, three to five, probably, right? Right. So, you know, that would probably work for for both ways. But try to reach out. If not, take the risk or change it slightly. You know, I chances are if they weren't podcasting very long, it's not like they're out there looking for this. But it is always a risk, you know, you Say you're wildly popular and then somebody come, does come back and say, oh, no, no, this was us first. And then you got money to deal with or whatever. So it is worth, like you said, it's worth a look. If you're going to do this seriously, it's probably worth, and Gordon came on months ago now, I yeah. think a couple months ago and said, it's probably worth, you know, spending some dollars on a copyright person to to get that done. For yeah. You. Or a trademark. Or check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Trademark, copyright, whatever. Yeah, I think Whatever. copyright. I, I'm probably is, using those terms wrong. Yeah, DR is like, what's the a trademark is when you trademark a name. A copyright is more, I think, your content. Like, you know, a writing is this is copyrighted. You know, um, you know, if you want the answer to that, GordonFiremark.com. He's the entertainment lawyer. He's on YouTube. He's everywhere, and uh, always uh, can answer your questions as well. And Chat uh, GPT would probably answer that question <laughs> additionally as well. I don't know if it's that I, hard. I'm not but. taking any legal advice from Chat GPT. <laughs> I was listening to Adam Curry and he kept mm. asking Chat GPT questions that he knew the answer to. Like, mm. what is the book that John mm-hmm. C. Dvorak has been working on for years but never finished? And they're like, it's this. And he's like, that is not correct. And it's like, oh, and then he's even, it's like, it's about a liquid. And it just kept giving him the wrong answer. So, Gary says, Mark Williams has been doing a LinkedIn podcast called LinkedIn Formed for 78 years and was recently contacted by LinkedIn lawyers. Yeah. Shades of entrepreneur on fire. Yeah. That was the interesting thing about that. That's the John Lee Dumas show is John's dad is a lawyer. So he had access to, I'm going to guess pretty cheap legal fees. And, but he was up against, you know, entrepreneur magazine. 
Yeah, you may have thought there who who from Entrepreneur Magazine is going to actually do this. It's a podcast, right? Now they're they're not similar forms of media. They are both forms of media, but I don't think anybody could have predicted in John's case that, right. that the magazine would come after him for that. Well, and, and I would argue that like look, one's a magazine, one's a podcast. They are kind of different in a way. But my point was yeah. most people won't find it because well, I can't afford the legal. Right. right. And I'm like, right. well, John, a John could, even if his dad wasn't a lawyer, but it's like, and I go and, you know, maybe his, his dad was a divorce lawyer. Who knows? You know, he may not have been up on entertainment law, in which case you go hire Gordon Firemark. But I just thought it was interesting that John started to kind of fight it and then said, okay, I'm on entre- entrepreneurs on fire. And most of the time his logo was EO fire. So he kind of backed away from the word entrepreneur. Yeah. So yeah, well, the EOF was kind of the middle finger to them to yeah. say, "Fine, I'll just go rebrand everything." And and but now that's a lot of work. I mean, he had a lot of episodes. Yeah, I'm sure he had to hire somebody. It might have been cheaper to hire the lawyer to fight it than to hire. I'm sure he had to hire somebody to go back and change all of that oh, yeah. stuff. In, Rebranding. Yeah. yeah. Holy people, like he had a lot of stuff. like we just Libsyn just changed advertise cast to libs and ads and just that's a, a decent, you know, I think there's, I don't know, 30 to 50 people working in advertise cast. Everybody's got to get new business cards yeah. and all the marketing material that you're going to bring to podcast movement. I think I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, which I'm pretty sure this is accurate. I'm pretty sure the marketing department knew this was happening and we're announcing it at podcast movement. So I'm pretty sure we have new material for advertised cast at the, uh, we're not going to be like, Oh, this, this is advertised cast, but it slips. And no, I'm pretty sure all the new material, but it's, it's a lot. And then the website. So, you know, you're paying your web guy to redo all the stuff. It's rebranding. Every is not, post, yeah. Every, and that's more than just copy paste. Yeah. Like, you know, you're just not doing that. You know, there's a good comment in chat about reminds me, you know, the LinkedIn guy yeah. could have reached out to LinkedIn and asked for a, a partnership deal. Yeah. To say, hey, I want to sign, and this isn't where LinkedIn pays you. Although that may, that could happen. You could say, hey, I want to license that name and then reach out. You know, you have to get, this is going to cost some money. It may be cheaper than rebranding though. To say, no, I want to, I'm, I want to license the LinkedIn name to use for these purposes. Not all companies will do that. I mean, it's that's not a, the, the company's got to be willing to go into some kind of relationship. And then they may take some stake in what you're doing plus and that may be an annual you know you may have to pay them annually for that something like that plus or they may if you do partner with them if you do license with them they may start advertising for you too so it's worth the ask like if they came you know I, if that had happened to me i might have said hey can i license this then can i license the use of of that name and if they said no I would say, well, how can I partner with you on? I want to do this. How can I partner with you on this and make this thing work? There are no guarantees in any of that. They may say, absolutely not. Change the name. Change everything. Some, some legal groups within organizations don't want any of that infringement. Some may say, oh, this may be a good opportunity to, you know, do partner together to to, to have more reach. Yeah, Gary says they made him a LinkedIn top voice though. He goes, yeah. but the fun thing is he speaks his mind about LinkedIn, which at times is not exactly complimentary. So, and that's why yeah. to me, I, I, somewhere along the line, I'm going to make a YouTube video about note joy. And the one thing I'm going to point out is the fact I, I, to me, that's what I love when I see a review and they go, I love this. I love this. I love this and this, and this. but there's one thing that I wish they would change that gives that review validity. Cause I see a, mm-hmm. On YouTube, if I see a video review and it starts off and it is an AI, an obvious AI voice talk, I'm like, okay, next, because no, just, and by that, I mean, no, but those are always, and they're, it's always just slow moving. Like they've taken the screenshots from their website and they're going to animate them by zooming in on them. So it's this video talking about the new Ron Speeder, uh, the thing, uh, I'm like, no, just no, but I always, obviously. Uh, Stock, obviously stock photography. Yeah. You know, Tom Buck is a guy that reviews microphones. Bandrew's another guy that reviews equipment and they will openly, first of all, both those guys 
buy their own stuff. And if they do get it given to them, they always fully disclose. They're like, no, mm. no, this is my opinion. I do not get influenced by, by that kind of stuff. So, but it's, it's painful to watch reviewers who are, mm, how do I use the word Th- that are not kind? We'll put it that way mm. to the, about the things they're reviewing in an unprofessional kind of way, you know, and, and you're like, Hey, it's just an opportunity. You know, you could review this thing and say, I love this and I love this and this works great for me here and, I, and this about it. And there were some things that didn't work for me in this, 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 and that. Right. I find some reviewers who just come straight out, just smashing it, you know, and, and you're like, is that really, I mean, is that really necessary at times? And so I, here's a good example. This last week, Aaron Lawrence was on my, I was on my show a week ago. And she she tested out one of these bird feeders that has a camera in it, right? So that you put the bird feed in it, the birds come up, the camera takes a picture of them. And oh, nice. it, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Kind of cool. Well, the 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 company A that she got it from, it was not the best design in the world. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, she reviewed it and said, I like all these things about it. And then there's these things I didn't like about it. It's hard to get the it's hard to get the bird food in there. The thing's kind of awkward. This doesn't work this way. Uh, the camera the, I have to charge the battery every five minutes kind of thing. So she said, but I did try <laughs> this other one and that seems to solve those problems. And so she, you know, talked about that and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'd have a hummingbird feeder outside. I'd love one of those. You know what happened? That company B contacted me the day after and they were like, hey, we heard on your show you wanted to, you were into hummingbird mm-hmm. feeders. We have one. Would you, you know, would you try one for us? And I said, you have to talk to me. There's, I don't do this via email. I, I want a conversation with you. And they said, oh yeah, great. And they were in China. So I had to, you know, it was late at right. night for me and early, early morning for them. But I told them, I said, look, I, I don't do reviews and I don't, I, if there's things I don't like, I'm going to say that. She's like, perfectly fine. We, we want honest, be right. honest about it kind of thing. I just wanted to make that really, really clear to them that I'm not like, I'm, you're, you're going to give this to me, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to, that, that's, that's right. not going to stop me from saying things about it. So you never, with those kinds of things in the review space, I, one of the things you don't have to be obnoxious about it, right? right? In the, in the bad review, but they also do, they're listening. You know, those, a lot of, a lot of times those companies are listening. And if you can be good, Erin is really, really good about the way she has her pros and cons. And she has these great relationships with the the vendors and the vendors say like, Hey, actually some of the advice she gave us, we've listened to, and we're going to implement them in future versions of this. And so I guess I'm saying be kind in some of these things. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a shill. Is that the right word? Shill. Yeah. You don't have to be a shill for them, but you'd also don't need to be a jerk right. about the way you say it either. There's a, a guy that I just discovered, I, Alan something, anyway, he's a, he's a preacher kind of guy. And somebody at my church is like, I, I mentioned the name Joyce Meyer. And she's like, well, you do, oh. and it, without getting into a religious discussion, but she's like, do you do know she's a false prophet? I'm like, wait, what? I've never, I'm like, I've seen Joyce. She seems pretty cool. And there's a guy on YouTube and about every ninth video is him explaining and he of course he has some sort of scripture you know Jonah blah 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 this is why I have to do this and then he just trashes another pastor and they're all much more popular than he is and I'm like I'm smelling a marketing thing here that maybe that's what his whole thing is and I'm like too bad it's yeah. too bad it, it's um, just a, it, it's the worst kind of marketing yeah Gary says one YouTuber I respect is uh is it Curtis Judd or Judd Curtis I never know but anyway that guy his audio tech reviews are always detailed and he always does the pros and cons in the opening seconds of the video and the, and great audio samples. It's awesome. Yeah. I like, uh, I, I always thought it was Curtis Judd, but maybe he's Judd, Cur- I mean, whoever that guy, you know him when you see him, Gordon's got some follow-up, which is great. The difference with, between entrepreneur and John Lee Dumas is entrepreneur is still using the name for their media product and services. So even after a, mo- a number of years, they have the right to protect and rely on. And that's the other thing. And that's the key there. They, they have the right to protect it, which means they can yeah. take it to court. Right. And that's what right. you want to avoid at, the, well, at that point. It well, doesn't mean it's a judgment on you or you can't do it. it. Just means they can take you to court and sue you for it. Well, that's the other thing 
Yeah, Gary says here, I saw a video about a guitar teaching system and the guy just totally trashed it. And they sent their lawyers for him. I've been in that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I disclosed I work for Libsyn and a company, you know, let me play with their stuff. And then I said, I didn't like it. And they sent the dogs after me. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. So that was fun. I also accidentally. Well, hold, hold on, Dave, yeah. before you get off that point. The other, I've watched a lot of reviewers to your, to you in your situation where they get something and they don't like it. And then they go back to the, who gave it to them and say, Hey, all these things I didn't like, I'm going to publish this. Or do you want me just to give it back? That's what I do. <laughs> right? yeah, I do that yeah. now. But yeah. yeah, also don't say they're a bunch of liars and you should never do business with them. Well, that that's was a classic. That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Dave Jackson classic. What not to do. Yes, with, exactly. You know, what not to say. <laughs> yeah. Learn so, from me. Don't do what I do. Don't do what I say. Yeah. <laughs> I've had my moments. I'm sorry. I cut you off there. No, but it's just the thing was in the article that I put in the chat room and I'll have it in the show notes. James Cridlin was talking about this. And he said, and, and Gordon, you can correct me if, and if you want to pop in, you can, the link's there at the top of the screen. James said he got a trademark for 900 bucks and that seemed a little cheap. I, I was thinking at least like I was thinking 1500. And then the other thing you have to, and this is the part I don't know is once you get a trademark, you then have to defend it. And I was looking at places where you, you know, like whatever, trademark farm or whatever it was, you know, there are all these different trademarks or us, but they all were like, oh, it's X amount to get the trademark. And then you hire us and it's X amount a year to then defend it. So if somebody's trying to use school of podcasting.com or whatever, and that's now the good news is, and I'm not an accountant or even play one on TV, but I'm pretty sure that's a, a fee you could claim as an expense on your taxes. So, but it still means you got to have a couple grand in the, in the kitty to uh to pay for that yeah, yeah. You defend it. The, the other i mean you could the other route you can go is just be super generic and use words that aren't that you know like peanut butter like yeah you know, that we're the peanut butter podcast well that's a pretty common term right and so yeah well maybe maybe the peanut butter folks would come after you i don't know jiffy that's it. jiff jiffy. that's it jiff and is peter jiffy pan gang up jiff? on you i thought it was just jiff <laughs> just j-i-f and Jeff. Jiffy yeah. is uh, the popcorn. Oh, right. Yeah, with the weird little Sultan's hat that comes out that of the pan. The stove. Remember the stove top yeah, that ones was that, that was, you would put on. The, you yeah. can't even. Buy, can you buy those anymore? Is that even a? A. Is that what's, even a what was interesting about that? This tells you how bored we were in the seventies. That that was entertainment, and B nine times out of ten you burnt it. So you oh, yeah. after yeah, you yeah, burned yeah. your hands trying to. Because it made basically a fishbowl of popcorn. Not safe, not yeah. safe at all. Yeah, no. And yeah, that was, what did you do before microwaves? Well, we we put this thing on a stove, well, but well, it was fun, you know, to air watch. Air poppers were big. Air poppers were huge. I mean, remember all the different brands? And oh, you because could get it was and, healthy popcorn. Ooh, and then it would, it would yeah. shoot it out the front. And, and then everybody said, well, but yeah, it, it tastes like cardboard. I'm like, healthy yes. Healthy until you just, until you put... It, some of them had a top where you could put butter in, you'd put butter in the, in the, in a container on top and while it was popping the corn, it would melt the butter and then you could right. put the delicious butter. I have butter one of those. Nope. Yeah. Do you? Still? I, I have a, well, I have the thing that it's a little, basically a hot plate with a dome over it and you put the oil in, you put the popcorn and then it, it turns this little cable. So it spins it. Cause I used to do that. Like my mom had a recipe this much butter. Uh, you had to throw some Crisco in there. It was a handful and a half of yellow popcorn and then like just a half a handful of white popcorn. But the fun part is you would spin it and it had these vents for, you know, steam. And the fun part was never make popcorn without a shirt on because once that thing starts popping, grease starts flying out of the the air holes. And it was, uh, it was always kind of like, well, how, how hurt am I going to get making popcorn this time? Cause to me, if you cut me, I will bleed popcorn. That's one of those things I could just not get enough. It's of. So delicious. It's yeah. amazing what we allowed in the seventies with fr flying grease and things like that, where, yeah. you know, it was smoked in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The good old days. Oh, oh the good old seventies. Yeah. 
On that $900, Gordon has chimed in, $900 is low. Yeah, I thought so. That's probably excluding the government costs. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things that, you know, it's Jim said the if you're taking this seriously, you know, because it's one of those things, it's probably one, because I need to. My, like the school, of, I shouldn't say that out loud. It was like, I'm going to go get a trademark. But I have. Listen, you've had it for a long time. Yeah, I've had it for like, 2005. But I, it's. Yeah, and you have proof it going yeah. back. You know, I, I do from from time to time. I get asked from from for my day job. Hey, do you have things that you've said about this going right. back in your videos to this day? Because some, you know, somebody's disputing something, and and so you you have a lot of material there. That's for yeah. That's for darn sure. That's where your website becomes important too. Publish dates and some of those kinds of things. Yeah, we are on a popcorn roll. Gary says, "Who remembers burned popcorn in the work microwave?" Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that never goes over well. We're Bowden now. That's for Bowden to make popcorn. See, for. I'm weird. I like it ever so slightly burnt just a little oh, it, it oh. kind of gives it a weird barbecue flavor but it does make the house stink uh the movie like scotch then if you were a, if you were a whiskey <laughs> drinker you'd like scotch <laughs> uh, todd the gator says uh the movie theater still used the spinning wheel yes and, it's a uh, proven it's a proven method i mean you, yeah. you can't the movie theaters when you when you have to make a metric ton i'll use we'll leave that word out yeah when you have to make a metric ton of popcorn every single night and there's something about that movie theater popcorn. I don't know. It's it's terrible and delicious yes. all at the same it's time. It's the fake butter that just screams diarrhea if you put too much on it. I it's can't just, stop eating it. And you can't stop eating it. Yeah, I it, can't stop, won't stop. I, just, I, blah, 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 blah. And the beauty of that is you've eaten at least three-fourths of the giant bucket the size of your head, and you're still halfway through the trailers. Like, you haven't even got to the movie yet. And then you, you know, the gallon of, of Coke, you know. And then the the joy that is okay. I'm I'm just gonna hold it for you know. And then you're watching you know some sort of superhero movie that's two and a half hours long. So Dr has one last thing on the transcript thing. If you did reach out to them, let's say after the five year mark, and they said no, I'm not gonna sell you my name or my feed. And it's after five years. To me, it, run. I'm, yeah, run. I'm like run. If they're, if, listen, if it's been five years and they are still saying no, if you do something along those lines, yeah. they are, I'm yeah. not, I'm not saying you just put a bullseye on your won't. back. You're like, they're going to be watching. Yeah, don't you. Just do something different. Yeah. Do something different. So let's see. We've got fun things. I'm going to show you a fun tool in a minute that I found. And then Tim has a question about newsletters. We're going to get to that. But right now would be a great time to talk about, except I have to go back to the first slide, which I didn't do. And this, of course, is, oh, I, ooh, I can do that. I can jump right to page one. Yeah, our awesome supporters. We love them. We need them. They're awesome. You can be an awesome supporter by going to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And this show is brought to you by the school of podcasting.com, where you get courses to walk you through from everything. We had somebody join up last night that is a flight attendant from Brazil. She's awesome, and she's going to be doing a show about stories about flight attendants and what happens in the sky. So, But she got that through coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching, and, of course, the awesome podcasting community. So besides flight attendants, we've got comedy writers. we got a couple retired pastors. We have, I think here, we have psychologists, a lot of great people in there doing podcasts. And Ask the Podcast Coach runs on PodPage. Now, here's the thing to tie it into what we're talking about, I asked Brendan, I said, hey, can I buy the domains tripodpage.com and learnpodpage.com because you own the copyright and the trademark to Podpage. He's like, he's like, and he goes, why are you buying those? And I go, well, tripodpage I'm going to use for my affiliate link and learnpodpage I'm going to make a free course. And as both of those were promoting his service, he's like, oh, by all means, you know, and I'm like, all right, cool. But I should have like printed out that email and had him sign it or something, but so far, Brent and I are buddies. Well, at least no, keep at least keep it right. I yeah. mean, at least keep it somewhere so you've got it. Yeah, and uh, we are using eCam. So if you want to check out eCam for live streaming, go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash eCam. And if you need more Jim Collison, there he is. Theaverageguy.tv is where you can check out Home Gadget Geeks. And is this the next slide? It is. It's time for the awesome wheel. Oh, Nate. Yes. yes. <laughs> And this is one of those things that's gamifying things makes it fun. I've had people say, how do I get my name on the wheel? I'm like, 20 bucks my a month. My favorite part. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite. So Everybody have, should 
give you 20 bucks just to get on this wheel. <laughs> so much fun. Right. We should add the uh, crap. I forget the name of the cartoon already. AT Aqua Fien, Aqua Teen, Aqua, Aqua Teen, Teen Hunger Aqua Force. Teen. Yes. The Don't uh, Dance. I'm sorry yeah. about that. The link to that, by the way, Aqua Teen Hunger Force podcast will be a link in the show notes, but we will shuffle it just so nobody thinks we're cheating. And we will let it spin. Will it be Glenn? Will it be Ralph? Will it be Ross? Who knows? Will it be? And it's spinning. It's going round and round. And it looks like it might be Flame Alive podcast. There you go. Because, hey, when when do the Olympics start in France? This summer. Yeah, right around the this corner. Summer. July, so, August, something. Yeah, keep the Flame Alive pod, if I remember right, is their website. Uh, I'll put a link to that out in the show notes. But thank you, ladies. They cover... And the beautiful thing is they've actually got to cover the Olympics. So how cool is that, that you're a podcaster and you get to go to the Olympics? That is very, very cool. So with that, as we wrap up our supporter segment here, you can, you know, look, if I'm saving you time right now, am I saving you money? Am I saving you headaches? Am I keeping you educated so that you can serve your podcast clients better? Well, then maybe you should think about becoming an awesome supporter at askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And of course, if you are a $20 person, not only do you get your name on the wheel, but you get your website listed at askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. So thanks to all our awesome supporters. And I found a new toy. I've been playing with this because I'm I'm getting ready to start the Your Podcast website. So I'm starting to play with website tools. And I found one that's kind of cool and kind of creepy at the same time. And this is, if you go to supportthisshow.com slash mouse flow, that is my affiliate link. And here's the fun thing. I just started using it, obviously. So there's only like three days of data here. But if I go here, I can see here where someone was here for 10 minutes from Surat, India, maybe? I'm not sure what that flag is. But at any rate, I can come, here's one here. Yeah, these are some overseas people. Somebody here nine hours ago from DuckDuckGo, they found the question of the month. So if I click on this now, I can watch what they did on my website. So we're watching their mouse go around. They're scrolling up. They're trying to figure out, do I upload an image or do I click on something? And they're not sure what to do. So this is great if you're like, why am I not getting anybody subscribing to the show? It's kind of frustrating because you're watching this going, just click the box. It's right there. Click begin upload. Yeah, you know, it's all you have to do. You know, and uh, suddenly I sound like Seinfeld. Just click the button. It's right there. What's wrong with you? Oh, these people. So I, I guess he's thoroughly, yeah, I guess he's thoroughly confused here. But it's what, here's the cool thing about it is you get 500 videos a month for free. Now, obviously, if you get more, you know, like, but I get, you know, 5,000 views a month. Yeah, it's supportthisshow.com. I'll throw this in the uh, chat room. Can't remember. I think it's S. <laughs> supportthisshow.com slash mouse flow, F O O W. And it's pretty handy. Now, the thing I loved about it was I have all these buttons for like, you know, join now, click here to play video click here to blah, blah, blah. It's so easy. You, you say, do you, it's like, do you want to tag your website? And I'm like, as in tag your, like, what does tag mean? They have a really great help section and you click on it. And I just went and clicked on the login button. I'm like, okay. And click on the join now button. Okay. Got it tagged. And now I'll be able to go in and see stats to see, okay, I had X amount of visitors and only, you know, a half a percent clicked on the join now button. It's pretty slick. And the reason I liked it, because there are other ones, there's Hotjar, there's one from, there's one from Microsoft, I believe called Clarity. And there's just reeked of like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but it's like, you have to change your privacy notice if you use this tool. And I'm like, that's kind of where I go red flag. I'm like, mm. so, and I know there's Hotjar. Hotjar is not bad. I've used Hotjar before, but I found this one. And because, you know, I know my audience, I'm like, What's their free plan look like? And they have a forever free plan. Now it's only 500 videos a month, but it's just like a good drug dealer. You know, the first one's free. And I was like, well, they get you hooked on the free plan. And then you're like, 
oh, wait, I want to have more videos or I want the data to stick around longer. It's not cheap. I mean, that's, you're talking a hundred dollars a month for the, for the growth plan. Yeah. And then the one, what's yeah. the one underneath that? I want to say it's like 30 bucks. Starters, 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah. 31. So, but I was like, but the fact that they had a free plan, I was like, well, you know, it's, it's a bummer that I can, you know, but they need to eat. And I'm sure these videos are not cheap to make and host in that whole nine years. They only host yeah. them yeah. for like a month. But if you, I just thought, and I was like, uh, Rich Graham says, I've used inspect, inspectlet for that. So there are a bunch of these. I just happened to come across this one and when I was I was Googling hot jar alternatives. And I was like, well, that's kind of fun, you know, and creepy at the same time. But it does. If if your goal is to, I want them to click on this button, you know, and you can also see how far they scroll down. So if your, you know, offers at the bottom and they're not scrolling down at all, it's, uh, I've seen these before. I forget the, I, hot jar was the, the one I used many, many moves ago. Does it ago. record everything? Does it record every, every, everybody that hits the site? Everybody that hits the site. Yeah. So So are you getting more than 5,000 there? 5,000 a month is the, is is that bottom 5,000 or 500? No, I think it's five. I thought it was 500. 5,000 recordings a month for starter. On the starter, right. For free. (sighs) On the starter. 500 for free. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm, I get not a ton of traffic, but more than that. Wait, the 5,000, I have to look. That's about probably where I'm at. But, but here's the thing. Did I tell you about my horror story with my, my, oh, dude. I switched, and this is not, I'm going to say this up front, this is not an all-in-one SEO problem. I'm going to point the finger at, at little old me. For whatever reason, all-in-one SEO had some sort of Black Friday deal or whatever it was, and I bought it. And I was like, so I switched from Yoast to all-in-one, and it seemed like it was, like there, there was probably one feature that I was like, Ooh, shiny thing. So I got it and I've been looking at, again, I'm getting into more website stuff. And I had a guy that was going to look at it and he, he was using hrefs, which is a super expensive tool. And he's like, dude, what happened to your website? I go, what do you mean? He goes, you were ranking really well for some really good keywords. And he goes about a year and a half ago, your website went in the toilet. He goes, what'd you do? And I go, the only thing I can think of is I changed my my SEO plugin. And he's like, well, he goes, both those are good. You know, whether it's Yoast or, or all in one. And I'm like, huh? Well, I have a tool called Uber suggest that they have a lifetime deal for like 250 bucks. So I've been, I use them off and on. It's kind of funny. Cause if you don't use them regularly, when you log in, they yell at you. They're like, we've quit updating. Like you, where have you been? All right. We're not updating Dave's stats anymore. And so they're like, we haven't crawled your site in a while. Like what's going on? I'm like, okay, here it is. And it's like, I can't crawl your site. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't crawl my site? Like, it's right there. I just, just Google it. Nope. So I, so I went over, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So I go into all in one SEO and I click on a couple of things and I go into like settings and then I go into advanced and you know, where you have that just holy cow, like, I can't believe this has happened. There's a, there's a thing called a robot text file on your website and you're basically, it's instructions on what you can and can't do. So like you can say, don't let this person or don't. So I had a slash, whatever it is, no follow, which basically means don't crawl my site. Like the only, the only stuff I was getting for it was from people that had linked to me or from me going to school of podcasting.com slash nine, two, two. I was like, no, you gotta be kidding me. And so what was interesting is I turned it off, obviously. And the first thing, it, I've never been so happy to get spam in my life. Because the minute, like, all of a sudden I'm getting relisted and just, sp- like, hundreds of spam messages. And I was like, oh, what's going on? So then I looked at my Akismet because, you know, I love WordPress. So I go to Akismet. I'm like, what's the deal? And I'm like, oh, you need to update your credentials, which I went to get them because you used to be able to use Akismet for free. <laughs> used to. Yeah. So you get to pick, but it can't be zero. So I paid them some money, got that, and that's not blocking my spam. But it was like one of those things where as much as we're worried about microphones and transcripts and blah, 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 you know, that's the whole point of that show is, hey, I know YouTube is the number two search engine. The number one is Google and Google needs your website. And when I started looking at it, I was like, oh, wait, I think I've got a problem here. And I did. So it's kind of fun to now, fun but sad to go into my Google ana- analytics and see where I was getting no traffic. And now it's just this, like I'm taken back off. 
but it's uh and i and yeah, yeah the, the link there's a broken link checker that mm-hmm. apparently is now working that didn't used to and man i had i think it was episode 24 like i have a lot of old episodes that yeah. are i'm linking to podcasters and services that don't exist anymore Correct. So I have to go in yeah. like unlink, unlink. And that, and also it's weird to see where you're at. Like episode 24, my show notes were maybe five sentences. It was like on today's show, we talk with Mark from such and such of the such and such, blah, blah, blah. And we also talk about yada, 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 links to sites. That was it. I'm like, man, okay. Now it's, I write a book for my show notes, but yeah, it was, yeah. it was really weird. So Ken Blanchard he says, do you ever wonder if foreign intelligence communities are using the mouse app to backdoor follow? Probably. I wouldn't put them past them. Those three letter or foreign intelligence or, or our own for that matter. Also, if you are in the DC area, Ken needs some help. His wife needs a little extra care and he, he takes care of her like a good man should, but he could use a day off on Friday. And if you live in DC, Ken, let's go to pretty sure speaklifechurch.com is still there or just look for Ken Blanchard. He's uh and Ken has uh if I remember right two ends cuz he's he's just that cool. No, maybe he doesn't. Hmm. Look for Ken Blanchard Speak Life Church or Black Man with a Gun. Although that title makes him sound very scary and he's not. He's a a lovely gentle person that's uh awesome and could use some help. So if you're in the DC area and want to help out a really good dude, check him out. But let me go back. I forgot I told Tim we'd answer his question. Jim, do you have a newsletter for uh, Home Gadget Geeks of any sort? Off and on. It's yeah. off and on. Yeah. So Tim's question is, and I forgot to do this. I, I think I've now fixed this. I figured this out. If we do this, that comes up. And then if I push the button again manually, it goes back to that. So, ooh, fun. I've, I figured out Nicely just like, done. Oh. yeah. So he's saying, look, is Substack more advantages? Is it more advantageous versus a blog post on your website? Instead of one or the other, do both. It would be my answer. I don't know what they do at Substack, some sort of magic potion, but I get at least, let's do this realistically, three, three new subscribers a week. And over time that for a while, when I first started, that's one that I should do every week. And it usually ends up being like two to three weeks out of a month. I don't know that I've done a full month every week and I try to do it on Friday but I, it, it just keeps growing. And so when I had my list on, I think I used to use MailerLite. I know I've used ConvertKit. And I was just like, look, I'm not really going to use this because Substack is meant for writers, for artists that want to spew their opinion on. It's not really meant for A-B split testing. Although I did one this week, I did a, um, a webinar with uh, Thomas Umstadt. And it's just fun to say Umstadt because can it sound more German junior? And he is a book guru. If you go to, by the way, schoolofpodcasting.com slash book launch, you can see a replay of his presentation. But I did that on Substack, but they, they kind of frown on you just like buy my stuff over and over and over. You're supposed to be communicating with people over there, but I, I tend to do that. And it's just, I don't know how they're growing it or why they're growing it. I know they do a lot of, if you like this, you'll like this kind of stuff with their newsletters. Like, hey, you're, you're listening to, you know, you're reading Dave. You might like Tony Bo, I think it is, who does something about black podcasting news, which is kind of cool. And then there's, there's a bunch of people over there, Tink Media, and we've all been jumping on Substack. And the thing I like about it, it's free. And, you know, normally I'm not a fan of free because that stuff goes out of business. So the first thing I did when I looked at it was, can I export the list? Like, do I own the list or is this an Apple kind of thing where, you know, Apple subscriptions, anybody that subscribes to that, you don't get the customer information because they're not your customer, they're Apple's customer. And I was like, really? So I like the fact that Substack, if I ever wanted to move, I could just export my list and go. But so far it's been working great. And what I did was... A, I had somebody, LinkedIn guru, said, Dave, do you know that you have a LinkedIn newsletter and you have one edition? So I set it up and forgot about it. So I take my Substack newsletter, which is really just like, it's a paragraph of like what's going on behind the scenes. Then there's a, like I mentioned, 
Like I'm now selling my audio book. It's not even done yet, but I'm doing a thing where if you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash audiobook, you can buy it now. And the first like two chapters are there. But if you're an early adopter, I'm going to give you a channel to where you can ask me questions as you listen to the book. And part of that will then be the bonus content for the book, which will include a shout out to you. And so that's, that was in there. And then there's a, what caught my eye? So like I, I learned about Moxie. If you're a an entrepreneur or freelancer, Moxie is a pretty cool tool. So if you're using your podcast as a business, so there's that part. And that's really it. It's it, to me, I look at it and go, this is the dumbest newsletter ever. And I have people say, I love your newsletter because I can read it in about two minutes. It's just, here's what's going on. Links, 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 links in like headings to show what the links are. And then what I started doing with my latest one was, I mean, like, Hey, here's the title of last week's ask the podcast coach. And it'll say, ask the podcast coach. And I'm now putting follow buttons after that. So if somebody really wants like, you know what? I always see these titles from ask the podcast coach. Now they're going to be able to click on follow. Cause if you're using pod page, which we are, if you go to ask the podcast coach.com slash follow, all the links are there that you've put in for Apple and Spotify. And I was going to say Google, not next week, because there's no show next week, but also there's, you will still have Google, but come April 2nd, Google podcast, that button won't really work. And per Libsyn, per Google from Libsyn, they're not going to redirect that, which how stupid is that? Why wouldn't you redirect it to YouTube music? And per James Cridlin, it's because you can't link to a show in YouTube music. How stupid is that? Which is why I'm not sending people. I'm like, use Podorama, use podcast guru, use podcast addict if you're on an Android phone. But so for me, you know, I, I like the fact that to get back to Tim's question, blog or newsletter, I would put it on my, my website. If you wanted to, you could have chat GPT kind of rewrite it for you. Maybe if you're worried about duplicate content, because your Substack is also a website, but do them both. But I, I, I don't know what's going on with Substack, but, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not giddy about five new listeners or five new subscribers. I just know I didn't used to get that when I was on a dedicated, you know, newsletter thing. So what's uh, when you do a newsletter, what's usually in yours? Uh, it, it was just personal advice or not advice, but just a personal updates and such. <clears throat> it, I, I always go back and forth with, with those newsletters. Sometimes I'll get really good at it for a while. You got, if you're going to do them, you got to do them regular. I saw an interesting thing this week, a good friend of mine, Cody Wheat, who used to do Shots of History. He's called in here before as a, and asked some questions. He did a podcast called Shots of History. Ran out of time. Life got busy. He got a, you know, he got a job that was very, very demanding during the pandemic and decided to kind of end the show. And I was sad because I really liked, you know, I really liked it. it was history of a lot of things going on here in the United States around the history of alcohol and some of those things. I enjoyed it. Well, he just recently turned that into a, to a daily post. So it's called mm. Shots of History. And it, he's writing a little bit of content every day. And it lands in your inbox or you can go to his site and do it. So I thought it was interesting. He went from audio to written content every day. And that's what he has time for and can put together and make it work. And maybe someday the podcast will come back. But maybe a great way, based on what he has time availability for, great way to keep a podcast feed going because he could reach out, you know, to those individuals and say, Hey, I'm doing this now as a, as a site, as opposed to a podcast. So I found that kind of interesting, a way to make it work for him. You know, if he didn't have time to sit down and do audio. Yeah. That's still kind of a head scratcher because the, the time consuming part of that is coming up with the content. His but posts are short. They're two, three, they're three paragraphs and it's historical stuff that you know, you can grab some stuff. And he maybe he's a really good writer, and yeah. and that stuff comes rather quick to him as opposed to sitting down. Listen, his his podcasts were really really involved. At one point, he was he kind of did a chronology of of the entire time of prohibition, and you're like, that's a lot of work, right? From yeah. a podcast perspective, you know, because I think people expect podcasts to be you know, half an hour, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour for that kind of stuff. His written content is now literally five minutes of reading, you know? 
I guess. Because to me, I'm like, again, you could do it super lo-fi and just go, welcome yeah. to a shot of history. Today's topic is this. Read your blog post, hit stop, upload it. You know, you could. Yeah. So, he's, he's, he's gone the written format. That's what he's, that's what, maybe he's got some help, you know, something along those lines, but I just kind of thought it was interesting that he'd for now. And he was really transparent with the community. I just don't have time to podcast. I'm going to be pushing these out to my site on a, on a daily basis. We'll see how daily goes <laughs> on writing, you know, yeah, that's I, a lot of work too. It's a lot of work too. It, well, daily anything is always, you know, a treat. And Rich had a great question. I don't know if it's a great question, but it's a, good, it's a question. And I can't find it. He asked, do I have a, because I'm always like, ask the podcast coach.com slash whatever. And I do. If you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash affiliate links, because I've had people like Rich, like, hey, do you have a page with all your affiliate stuff? And I do. It's just, it's at the school of podcasting and I'm over there right now as we speak, except I just typed in school of podcasting. Most of it's at support this show. What I need to do is support this show.com. I need to have it. If it's 404, go to this page with all the affiliate links because it explains there that, you know, these are typically either tools I've used, or I know somebody else who has used them. And I just add, and then I always, this is another mistake I see a lot of people do. I have all these links on here and all in, in theory, most of these links should open to a new window because if I have them open up in the same window, then people lose my website. They go like, Oh, cool. Mouse flow. Look, I'm going to click on this. And then if they go, that's not for me. Then they got to go back to school of podcasting, go to the about page, click on affiliate links. So, and that was from Mark from practical prepping dot info. Remember the school of podcasting? Like, why don't you have a page with just everything? He goes, cause he's always emailing me going, Hey, I'm going to use, you know, convert kit or whoever from my email list. You have a link to you. He just, he's launching a course on prepping and is wrong. He says, my mouse flow link is wrong. That's not good. I did ask them because they're, I kind of get bummed when different affiliate programs send you right to a sign up page. Because unless I've done a good job of explaining to you what the tool is, you might need a little convincing to, you know, buy something. And when an affiliate link is right to the buy button, I'm like, huh. And then Libsyn partnered with some tool called bunny something and you can get 20% off. I need to, uh, to look at that. And they gave me an affiliate link. Cause usually your affiliate link is something like, you know, whatever website.com question mark equals blah, blah, blah. And that blah, blah, blah is your affiliate kind of identification. And mine was, you know, question mark equals like nothing. And I'm like, how do you guys know this is coming from me? And what was interesting is the person I was talking to, I I don't think, I don't know, English may not have been his, his first language or something, but we definitely had kind of a, uh, a problem communicating. And are you as sick as double authentic authentication as I am? Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always like, wait, I, I, I have three seconds to get the link before it goes through. It's, I'm trying to get the link to, here we go, partner resources. So I, I love when people use, where is my link to affiliate logo here? Just so you guys can see what I'm doing. This is the back end of their affiliate program. Yes. Here's my, how to use the link. Where is my link though? You know, I'll, it'll be in the show well, notes. Did you, did you do it? Do you do like us? It was, is it support my that support, you have? And support, that, yeah. Support this show.com this is, show. Or is this show.com, yeah. but then you do some slash and it's always you slash whatever. Slash yeah. yeah. And I cannot, it's weird. I'm in their links and I'm like, yeah, but where is my, you know, you think I, while you're, while you're finding that one of the things that I did at home gadget geeks is I created an affiliate page that just has all of the, I do it, you know, I do a post in there, but it has all my affiliate stuff in it. Yeah. So I noticed a support this show.com just directs uh, over to your buy me a coffee, right? <laughs> if you just do that one, 
you could have that direct to an affiliate page on school of podcasting and then you could list all your affiliates there too. Yeah. Well, Rich has saved me. It's, it's not the link. It's, and I know this is shocking. Um, <laughs> I typed it wrong. Yeah. So. It's hard to do. It's hard to do all this stuff live and get it right. And yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to spell out the average guy TV. You never know when that's going to go terribly wrong, you know? So <laughs> as, as we, as we saw last week, trying to get this, neither one of us knew it was wrong. But, oh, until the but very end. And did. and Mark watched it later from podcastbranding.co. He goes, you need to fix Jim's name. And I was like, it, like yeah. go to like five minutes till the end. I finally figured it out. But obviously I didn't even notice. Yeah. So it's not that, not that big of a deal. Yeah. So ooh, this will be fun. I've never done this. For the record today, all the, the noises and stuff that you hear, instead of coming from the roadcaster, I have them in Ecamp. So what's fun is they're under, so now I will have a separate track because I'm going to try to use the Ecamm recording instead of the Roadcaster recording. And so I always, like right now, you ready? This is this is behind the scenes. When I click on the button, you don't hear the sound effects because they're not going. And then I go, Jim, what's coming up on, you know, Home Gadget Geeks over at TheAverageGuy.tv? And Jim says, as oh. he's answering, I slowly start to fade the music up which usually is squished by YouTube algorithms by their compression anyway. But at least this way I'll have a track with this music that I can, you know, put in later. But so what's going up? sound a lot better. The yeah. music does sound a lot better. It's Easter week. It's spring break time. I decided to take a couple weeks off. So I'm off for the next two weeks. I think I'm going to plan to do my taxes during this time. Ah, off. So not a bad idea. In the U.S., it's tax time. So don't forget April 15th is right around the corner. Get out there, get your tax. There you go. On the School of Podcasting, I was all set to provide the interview with the godfather of content marketing, Joe Puluzzi, who I finally got to come on my show. I've been chasing Joe for three years. And how do you get somebody to come on your show? Wait till they have something to promote. So I'm going to be at Content Entrepreneur Expo in Cleveland, May 5th through the 7th. And Joe, I was like, hey, like, and I also helped him. I'm like, Joe, do you know you have a buzz in your podcast? And I think because I helped him, he maybe it was the whole law of reciprocity, but he finally came on my show. And I can't wait to play you that, except it's the last question of the month. It's the last episode. So I asked the question, what do you think of when you hear the phrase podcasting 2.0? And boy, it's 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 not the people at podcasting 2.0. They got some some work to do there in the marketing department. So that's what's going to come up. And I'm going to explain kind of what is it? Maybe you should try it, even if you don't know what it is. And what's the difference between getting an ad that pays you 0.004 cents and how many downloads would it take to do that? Now, the fun thing is I can't see how long this is, but I think we're towards the end of this. So like, subscribe, and ring the bell. No show next week. Honest, no show next week. We will see you then. See you in two weeks. Take care.